Welcome to Module 6. In this module, we'll talk about more Boolean theorems. We'll briefly review the Boolean theorems of one variable that we talked about in the last module. And then I'll introduce Boolean theorems of several variables. So as a review, here are the Boolean theorems of one variable that we talked about last time. We have identity. We have a variable and an and relationship with one. We just get that variable back. Um, definition for identity, we put it in an operation and get itself back. Or the dual, replace the ands with ors, ones with zeros. We get b, a variable in an or relationship with zero. We just get that variable back. Null element, well, if we have a variable in an and relationship with zero, it nulls out the effect of that variable, and we just get a zero as the result of that expression. The dual, replace ands with ors, zeros with ones. And if we have a variable in an or relationship with a one, it nulls out the effect of the variable and we get one back. So null element theorem. Item potency, well, if we have a variable in an and relationship with itself, that evaluates just to whatever that variable was. So B and B is B. So the power of just the single variable is the same if, if we and it with itself as just the power of that same variable. So potency is kind of power. Item is um, the power of the single um, item or variable. Similarly, if we have a variable in or relationship with itself, we get that variable back. Involution, if we invert a variable twice, we get that variable back. And complements, if we have a variable in an and relationship with the inverse of that variable, we get a zero. If we have a variable in an or relationship with its inverse, we get one, because one of these terms is gonna be one no matter what. Something or one is one. And if you go back to, again, the prior version, the theorem, T5, one of these terms is going to be zero no matter what. Zero in an and operation makes the entire expression evaluate to zero. Okay, so a quick review of our theorems of one variable. We have our theorems, theorem one through five, as well as their duals. Now let's talk about Boolean theorems of several variables. So we have, again, numbering system is arbitrary. Certainly don't need to memorize that, but it helps us keep them in order. So we have T6 through T12. And you'll recognize some of these names from kind of regular algebra that you've done before. So commutativity, associativity, distributivity, those three. And those sound pretty familiar to stuff that you've done before with regular algebra. The last four, however, are unique to Boolean algebra. And we have covering, combining, consensus, and De Morgan's theorem. So again, as we had with our axioms and theorems of one variable, we can have the dual form of these theorems as well. So we replace our ands with ors, and ors with ands, these ors with ands, etc. Dot dot dot. Place ands with ors, ors with ands, and we're going to get the dual form of these theorems. That principle of duality. So commutativity, we have the theorem T6 as well as the dual form of that theorem, T6 prime. So commutativity, we have B and C is equal to C and B. We can commute those terms. So B and C is the same as C and B. I can commute these terms around or move them around and the expression is the same or evaluates the same, th the same thing. So we can have the theorem again, T6, or the dual of that theorem. We replace our ands, our ands, we replace those with ors, and we have 
the dual of that theorem that is also valid. Here's another example, our covering theorem, replace our ands with ors, and vice versa, our ors with ands, and we get the dual, so t9, and then it's dual t9 prime of two forms of the covering theorem. We have these seven theorems. Let's talk about each of them individually. So the first theorem we're going to talk about is commutativity. And this theorem is exactly the same as what we have used in regular algebra before. So our variables can commute across an AND operation or across an OR operation. So commute or move across these operations. So B commutes over to the right and C commutes to the left and we end up with the expression C and B, which is equivalent to our original expression B and C. So this is the same as saying we have some variable X times Y in regular algebra. That's equivalent to Y times X. Those terms can commute across the, in this case, multiplication operation and still have the same evaluation, the same result. Okay, so we've seen this before. Similarly to our OR operation here, B or C, well, these terms can commute or move across the OR operation and have uh, the similar evaluation or the same evaluation. So we get B or C, that's the same as C or B. And again, we've seen that 5 plus 3, well, that's the same as 3 plus 5. These terms can commute across that, in this case, addition operation, and have the same result. Okay, so commutativity, this is the same as what we've seen before in regular algebra. Associativity is also the same as what we've seen in regular algebra. So we can associate different terms and the expression or the evaluation of the expression is the same. So B and C, if we evaluate that first and then and that result with D, that's the same as if we evaluated C and D first and then anded that result with B. So across an and operation, it doesn't matter how I associate the variables. I can associate or group the variables in whatever order I would like, and the expression evaluates the same. This is the same as we've seen in regular algebra. If we do x times y first, and then multiply it out with a z, that's the same as if I did y times z first, and then multiplied that result with x. So we can associate across just like with a multiplication operation, this is the reason we've used these operators, kind of overloaded them and, and adopted them for the AND operation, because they have similar properties. So across an AND operation, I can associate the variables or the terms within the operation really any way I'd like to. So same thing with its dual. Across an OR operation, I can perform B or C, and then OR that result with D. Or, likewise, I'll get the same result if I OR C with D first, and then OR that result with B. And again, this is what we've seen in regular algebra. If we have some variables that we're adding together, add B plus C first, and then add the result to D, is the same as if I added C plus D first, and then add that result to B. So I can associate these terms or these variables across an OR operation any way I would, I would like to. So the last theorem that we're going to look at that's similar to our typical algebra that we've done you know, in prior classes is distributivity. So let's first look at the regular form of this theorem. So I can take this B and and distribute it across the C or D. So I can get B and C, this first term, or, here we have our or, 
or B and D, that last term. And this is similar to what we've seen in regular algebra, where we have some term, let's say Y, times X plus Z. And I can distribute that Y across the X plus Z and get equals Y times X plus Y times Z. So now let's look at the dual form of this expression. Dual form, we're going to place our ands with ors. So that first and here, we replace with this or. And in the re resulting expression, replace those ands with ors. And our ors with ands. And there's an and, an implied and there in the middle. And so now we get a, another expression here for our, distributiv our distributivity theorem. And so we get our dual form of our distributivity theorem. And boy, this theorem looks, this version of the theorem looks kind of weird. But in this case, we have our or operation distributing across the and. So we get B or C and B or D. So this is the dual form of distributivity, and it's not like regular algebra. So in regular algebra, we can't do this operation. We can't say, okay, let's see, B plus C times D, this is not equal to B plus C times B plus D. So this, this does not work in regular algebra. So again, pointed out in text here, the non-dual form of the theorem, this is like regular algebra. But the dual form of the theorem of distributivity, this is not like traditional algebra, where our or can distribute over the and. Now we get into the theorems that are unique to Boolean algebra. So the first one of those theorems is the covering theorem, T9. T9 says that we can say B and B or C is just equal to B. Okay, so there's the theorem. And we can also talk about its dual, B or B and C are just equal to B. And so we've actually seen this expression in a prior module. So this expression is like y equals b or b and c. This is like saying, well, you can get a yurt if you bring a bonnet or you bring a bonnet and a cat. So let's see, you show up and you have your bonnet. They say, yep, yeah, you can buy that yurt. Check, you got a yurt. Like that entire expression, this expression here, will evaluate to true if you have a bonnet. So one or something is going to evaluate to one. Yep, you can have that, that yurt. Or you go and you say, okay, I would like that yurt, so I have a bonnet and a cat. I bring both of them, and they're like, yep, yeah, got that yurt. Check, one, this expression, B and C, evaluates to one, we get one or something, turns out to be one or one, and we get we get that yurt. So you show up and you say, oh, okay, well, um, I have a bonnet, but I don't have a cat. So got a bonnet, but no cat. Well, does it matter if you have a cat or no cat? This term, B, already covers the effect of this term, B and C. The B and C term is more limited, right? That term's only gonna be true if you have both of them. But this term over here is always gonna be true whenever this 
term is true because it includes the same term B in, in those expressions. So this term right here, B, already covers the effect of this term because that term is that same term B just anded with something else and something, well in this case C. So that first term B already covered the case of B and C. So that just evaluates then to Y equals B. So we're going to show other ways of proving that these theorems are true. But logically, you can think about some of these theorems and say, oh, yeah, that makes sense. B or B and C just reduces to B because this term B already covered that more limited case of B and C. If B is true, well, we have one or something. We know that one or something is going to evaluate to one. This is the case that B is one. If B is zero, well, then we get zero or, well, we know that case is zero too because we have zero and something. So zero or zero, we get zero. So we thought about this logically. Right? You can go, this expression will be true if you have a bonnet or a bonnet and a cat. Well, really that evaluates to, do you have a bonnet or not? B. And we've looked at the exhaustive possibilities when B is 1 and B is 0 and shown that in fact the result of that expression is just B. So the covering theorem, one of these terms B already covers this term. So that second term is already covered. We don't need it in our expression. Similarly with this one, this term already takes care of, of that case. And if B is 1, for example, we're going to get 1 and 1. And we'll get 1. If B is 0, we'll get 0 and something. And 0 and anything is just 0. So again, we'll get B itself. So the most common way that we use the covering theorem is the dual form of covering, where we have some term or that term ended with something else. And we can reduce that to just the single term, B. So B or B and C is equal to just B. The combining theorem, we have B and some term C, or B and the complement of that term, C bar, and we can reduce that or combine these two terms to be just B. So we can think of this, again, logically and say, okay, if you have a billy goat and a cat, or a billy goat and no cat, you can go to the park. Well, does it really matter if you have a cat? No, you just have to have that billy goat. All right? You can go to the park if you have a billy goat and a cat, or a billy goat and no cat. Well, I can combine those terms and say, well, that really just means I have to have a billy goat to go to the park. And we also have the dual form of that expression here, B or C, all of that ended with B or C bar. And that's also equal to B. Okay, so combining, I can combine two terms. So the next theorem is the consensus theorem. And this theorem basically says that this term here, this third term, is the consensus theorem. It doesn't really give us any more information than the first ter two terms already gave us. So if we get B and C, or B bar D, that last term, or CD, is called the consensus term. It's the one that already agrees with what's been said, what's been told in the expression. So that part of the expression already told us the same information that was given 
in that last term. And so we can get rid of that term and end up with it, just the expression b and c or b bar d. And so you'll notice that it's some term, in this case the b term, and then in the second term we have the complement of that term. So we have the true and complement form of a term, in this case b, and we have them anded with some other terms, c and d. And so this consensus term is just the and of those two terms, C and D. The consensus theorem is used less frequently than the other two theorems, combining and covering, but we will see it in later modules as well. Now let's talk about the last Boolean theorem of several variables. So here we have what's called De Morgan's theorem. De Morgan's theorem says that the complement of the product is the sum of the complements. And again, product in terms of Boolean algebra means the and operation and sum means or. So if we have some product A and B and C and we take its complement, that's equivalent to taking each term and complementing them and then oring those results together. So the complement of the product is equal to the sum of the complements. So another way to think about this is if we take our operations A and B and C, so the complement of the product and we take those AND operations, turn them into OR operations, SUM operations, take down each individual term, and then complement those individually, we get De Morgan's theorem. So our ANDs turn into ORs, and we complement each individual term. So again, written out here, the complement of the product is equal to the sum, the or, of the complements. And, of course, we have the dual as well. So we can replace our ands with ors, and our ors with ands, and we get that the complement of the sum, the or operation, is equal to the product and of the complements of each individual term. So again, we can go back to our scratch space here and say the complement of the sum of the terms, or the or of the terms, we can take those or operations and turn them into and operations, take each individual term and complement those terms and we get the dual. So we take our ORs, turn them into ANDs. So if we have a, an OR term under a bar, under an inversion bar, we can take those ORs, turn them into ANDs, and then complement each of the individual terms. So here we have T12, De Morgan's theorem, and the dual version of De Morgan's theorem, T12 prime. And now putting them together, De Morgan's theorem says that we can take the complement of the product and make that equal to the sum of the complements. Its dual is that we can take the complement of the sum of the OR operation of those terms, and that's equivalent to the product of the complements of each of the individual terms. And again, here we have the list of all of our Boolean theorems of several variables. So in this module, we've introduced the Boolean theorems of several variables. In the next modules, I'll talk about how we can prove that these theorems are true and how we can use them to minimize or reduce our equations.